Hello and welcome to Earth School everyone. Today we are going to understand about property of subtraction. If you haven't understand about property of addition, you have to understand that first so that the property of subtraction comes to your mind more better. Okay, let's understand about property of subtraction. So first one is the closure property. What does this say? First let's understand the definition. It says that for any whole number or sorry any two whole number let's say a and b so what is this a and what is this b this a and b are any two whole number okay then it is a scenario that our a is greater than b right we have taken two whole number now they could be any two whole number let's say two and three right we have taken two numbers two and three like this but what is the scenario that a is greater than b so we can say that our greater number is 3 and smaller number is 2. So we can just consider like that. But you just see this, that two whole number A and B, if A is greater than B, I'm highlighting the points which are very, very important, okay? So if A is greater than B, then A minus B is a whole number. Let's understand first till here, all right? We are going to first understand uh, this definition, which I have just uh, curved inside the brackets. What does this say? First of all, we have to consider any two whole number. Can you give me any two whole numbers? Let's, let's say 4 and let's say 3. Okay, so we will consider any two number. Now see why they have given A and B instead of saying the numbers. They have just given A and B. Now instead of A, there could be any value. Instead of B, there could be any value. But we are talking about the scenario when where A is greater than B. So let's consider that our A is 4 and B is 3. Why I have considered A as 4 and B as 3? Because I just want my A to be greater than B. In this scenario, let's say... Now what I'm going to do, now I'm going to subtract A minus B. What is A? A I have considered to be 4. So A minus B now what I'm going to do. So 4 minus 3. What will be my answer? My answer will be positive 1. Very, very important to note that my answer will be positive 1. Now what do I mean by this? I mean that is 4 a whole number? Yes, 4 is a whole number. Is 3 a whole number? Yes, 3 is a whole number. But is 1 a whole number? Yes, 1 is also a whole number. So what does the pro uh, closure property say? Closure property just simply says that if you are going to add up two whole number, their answer will be also a whole number. But in this case, when you are going to subtract up two whole number, in that case, you are getting whole number. But there is a scenario that your A should be greater than B. What if my A was not greater than B? What if my B was greater than A? Let's in that scenario, let's say that I have again the two numbers 4 and 3. But instead of considering 4 as A this time, I am considering it B. And instead of considering 3 as B this time, I am considering it as A. What we are going to do now? We are again going to do A minus B. A minus B. But this scenario, it will not be 4 minus 3. Instead, it will be 3 minus 4. Why? Because I have considered A to be 3 and B to be 4. Alright, then what will be my answer? My answer will be minus 1 in this case. It will not be positive 1. Instead, it will be negative 1. Why negative 1? Because you see a negative number is larger in this case. Negative 4 is larger. So what is happening? Let me just summarize a whole thing now. What is happening is that first of all, the definition said that you consider any two number. But there are two cases. What are the two cases? First of all, you have to consider A to be greater than B. And secondly, in the second case, you can say, you have to consider B to be greater than A. But in both the scenario, you have to do A minus B. When you are going to do A minus B, it's not important that always you get a whole number. What is a whole number? It's starting from zero, moving to infinity. But it does not include negative number. But over here, when we are doing A minus B, our answer is coming out to be negative. But what was the closure property? It was saying that whole number minus whole number should be equals to a whole number. But it is not a whole number. Right? It is negative 1. Negative 1 is not a whole number. Hence, what do we conclude? We conclude this thing that closure property is not always applicable to subtraction 
closure property does not work. Why doesn't it work? That when you are going to subtract up to whole number, might be you get the answer negative. That's why this property does not work. And what if you were getting the positive answer always? You were getting positive always, no matter what you were subtracting, but you were getting always the positive answer. In that case, the closure property would have worked, but over here, it does not. Why doesn't it work? Because you see, when you are going to subtract up a whole number with another whole number, there could be a positive answer. Or when you are going to subtract up a whole number with a whole number, you might get a negative answer as well. That's why it does not work over here. Okay, let's move to the next property. I will in the end give you a recap of all of these property once again. Our next property is commutative property. What does the commutative property say? It's more easier than that of the previous property. But let's understand it. So commutative property. Let's move to the definition first of all. That for any two whole number. Again you have to choose any two whole number. Let's consider uh, 5 and 6 as a whole numbers. Okay, these are two whole numbers. Then what you have to do? You have to do A minus B. It means you have to subtract up any two whole numbers. Let's do A. Let's consider this 5 to be A and 6 to be B. Again, I'm repeating this thing that A and B could be anything. It's not important to be 5 and 6 only. It could be 2, it could be 3. It could be anything in between or from 0 to infinity. It could be anything. So first of all, what I'm going to do? I'm going to do A minus B. A minus B. And on the other side, I'm going to do B minus A. And I'm going to check is the value for both of them equal. So first of all, let's do A minus B. So what will I do if I will do A minus B? I will do 5 minus 6, correct? In that case, what will be my answer? My answer will be negative 1. But now in the next scenario, what I'm going to do? I'm going to do B minus A. What is the B value in this case? It's 6. What is the value for A in this case? It's 5. What my answer is? My answer is positive. Is the positive one and the negative one same thing? No, it's not same thing. One has a negative sign and one has a positive sign. So they are completely opposite to each other and hence they are not the same thing. So it means that when you are going to interchange the positions, when you are going to interchange the position, your answer is not coming out to be same. Right? But in the case of addition, what was happening? If you haven't understood the addition property before understanding the subtraction, let me tell you a quick recap what happens over there in the commutative property of addition that when you are going to do 2 plus 1, you will get 3. Even if you are going to do 1 plus 2, you are going to get 3. But in this case, if you are rearranging the order, when you are doing 5 minus 6 and in the next scenario you are doing 6 minus 5. When you are rearranging the order, you are getting a different answer. Your answers are not same anymore. It means the commutative property does not work for subtraction. The, hence, the subtraction of the whole number is not commutative. It means you cannot rearrange the order and get the same answer. You will get a different answer. For example, when I was doing 5 minus 6, I got minus 1. While I'm doing 6 minus 5, I'm going getting 1. Similarly, you can try for different numbers. For example, let's choose 4 and 5. So if I will do 4 minus 5, I will get a different answer that will be negative 1. Or let's choose a different that is uh, 4 and 6, let's say. So when I'm going to do 4 minus 6, I will get my answer as negative 2, while if I will do 6 minus 4, I will get my answer as positive 4. So you see the answers are different when I'm rearranging this order. When I'm rearranging the order, then I'm getting a different answer. What does this mean? This means that the commutative property, the pro commutative property says that if you are going to rearrange the order, then too you are getting whole number. But in this case, no, you are not getting the same answer, neither you are getting the whole number. Let's move to the next property. Don't worry if you didn't understand. I will just quick give you a recap also. Let's move to the associative property. What does the associative property say? Now, again and again, I'm repeating this thing that you have to understand the addition first to understand these property. If you haven't, you have to understand that first. So, associative property. For any three whole number, let's consider A, B, C. Till the previous scenario, we were only considering two numbers and we named them as A and B. But in this case, we are going to imagine three, three numbers, A, B, and C. Let's give it any name. Let's say A is 5, B is 4, and C is 3. Imagine that. In this scenario, what are they saying? They are saying that you have to do A minus B minus C. This is what you have to do. So let's do it. That A minus B and then minus C. Let's see what the answer comes out. 
So instead of A, I will place 5. Instead of B, I will place 4. I will close up in the bracket and then I will use a minus sign and I will do 3 over here. And let's see what the answer is going to come. Now, if you haven't understood the board mass rule, first you have to understand the board mass rule. So what you have to do, for, uh, for 5 minus 4 is what? It is 1. Board mass rule, according to the board mass rule, first we have to solve the bracket. So 5 minus 4 is 1. And then outside there is negative 1. So my answer will come out to be negative 2. Now, in the next scenario, let's solve this thing. Let's solve this part. That is A minus B minus C. Let's solve this part. If I'm going to solve this part, then what will I write? I will write A minus B minus C. And B minus C is inside the bracket. What is the value for A? It is 5. What is the value for B? It is 4. And what is the value for C? It is 3. Now let us solve it up. So again, we have to solve the bracket first. So it will be 5 minus and what will be 4 minus 3? Simple, it's a 1. But now it's 5 minus 1. You can remove the bracket now because you have already solved the bracket part. So it will be 5 minus 1. What is the answer for 5 minus 1? It is 4. So you see in the addition what was happening in the case of commutative property of the addition. When you were rearranging the number, then also you were getting the same answer. But in this case, in the case of subtraction, when you are rearranging the order or you are grouping of different number, in that case, your answer is not coming out to be same. What if instead of this, if it was addition, in that case, either you can do 2 plus 3 and then 1 or you could do 1 plus 3 and then 2. You can write it in any way, you will be getting the same answer. But in this case, if you are rearranging the order, that is, you are doing 5 minus 4 and minus 3, but over here you are doing 5 minus 4 minus 3. You are grouping, uh, grouping up a different numbers. Sorry, you are grouping up different number. In that case, you are getting a different answer. Let me quick, very quick, give you a recap of uh, all the three properties. So the first property, according to the closure property, what should be there? If you are going to subtract up to number, to whole number, then your answer should also be whole number. But in this case, you find it out that no, the closure property is not applicable for the subtraction. It means if you are going to subtract up to whole number, the answer will not be a whole number. It will be a negative number, right? It, or sometime might be positive as well, but it will not be always followed. It means the closure property does not follow for the subtraction. When you are going to subtract up to whole number, the answer may or might not be a whole number. Okay, then commutative property. What was the commutative property? That if you will rearrange the order of two or more whole number, if you will rearrange the order, in that case, you will not get the same answer. For example, 5 minus 6 is minus 1, while 6 minus 5 is 1, 4 minus 6 is minus 2, but 6 minus 4 is 2. You, you have just interchanged the values, right? You have just do, uh, done 4 minus 6 and 6 minus 4, but the answer is different. Then the last one is the associative property, which says that if you are going to group up different numbers, it is not going to work. And hence, the subtraction of the whole number is not associative. So we have learned this thing that for the case of subtraction, for the case of subtraction, neither the associative property works, nor the uh, commutative property works, nor the closure property works. So for the properties of subtraction, none of the property works, neither closure nor commutative and nor the associative. And this was it about the property of subtraction.